Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the cardinality of power set of a given finite set. As always, we'll first discuss what is even the meaning of it. First thing, let's break it down into smaller components for better understanding. There are two keywords here. One is cardinality. The other one is power set. I'm not going to explain what a finite set is. Since you're watching this video about the cardinality of power set, I suppose that you know the basics. To put it briefly, a set is a collection of well-defined objects. Those objects in technical terms are referred to as elements. And a finite set is of course a set with only finitely many elements. So what is a power set? The power set of a given set is by definition the set of all possible subsets of the given set. Now this calls for another definition. What's a subset? Set A is set to be a subset of set B, if and only if every element of A is also an element of B. For example, let A be the set 1, 2, 4, B be the set 1, 2, 4, 5, and C be the set 1, 2, 3, 4. Then A is a subset of B because every element of A is also an element of B. B is not a subset of C because Element 5 is in B, but it's not a part of set C. And again, A is a subset of C for the same obvious reasons. You are getting this idea, right? Oh, by the way, this is the notation for subset. Of course, this means not a subset. Having understood the concept of subset, let's see some examples of power set. Let A be empty set, then the power set of A is the set containing empty set. This is the notation for power set, by the way. Let B be the set with element 1. Then power set of B is a set containing empty set and the set with element 1. Think about it. Empty set is subset of set B. And this set, which is B itself, is of course a subset of set B. Let C be the set with elements 1 and 2. Then power set of C contains empty set, set 1, set 2, set 1 comma 2. Once again, you can notice that empty set is a subset of the given set C and the set itself is also a subset of the given set C. This you will notice always. Empty set is a subset of any given set and the set itself is also a subset of the same set. Let D be the set with elements 1, 2, 3. Then the power set of D contains empty set singleton 1, singleton 2, singleton 3, set 1, 2, set 2, 3, set 3, 1, and the entire set 1, 2, 3. Now what's the meaning of cardinality? It is just a fancy terminology to denote the number of elements in a given set. It is denoted by the same notation that we used in the case of absolute value. But you don't read it as absolute value, you read it as cardinality of the given set. It'll look like this. Cardinality of set A is 0. Cardinality of the set D is 3. Now we see a very obvious pattern in the cardinality of power sets. The first power set has one element. The second power set has two elements. The third power set has four elements and this fourth power set has eight elements. If our observation is right, a set with four elements will have two power four elements in its power set. A set with nine elements will have two power nine elements in its power set. In general, we can say that if a set has n elements, then its power set will have two power n elements. Is this claim true? And what is the proof of it? Let's find out. Let's see the formal theorem statement. If the cardinality of a given set is n, then the cardinality of its power set is 2 power n. The most common proof of this theorem is the proof by mathematical induction, which is kind of boring. So I thought, let me give you a better proof, a cool proof using combinatorics. 
If you stick to the end of the video, I'll give you a bonus proof which is so much simpler than any other proof. Okay, now let's begin with this proof. First of all, let's get one thing clear. This theorem talks only about the cardinality of sets, which is all about the number of elements in a given set. And it's got nothing to do with what those elements themselves are. So for the sake of convenience, we can assume them to be anything. So let's assume that set A is 1, 2, 3, so on up to n. Another point to be noted is that in a set, the elements can be written in any order. Now we are going to count how many different ways a subset can be chosen from this given set. Let me make this task even simpler. Forget about sets, subsets, power sets and everything we have discussed so far. Look at it this way. We have n distinct objects. We label them 1, 2, 3, so on up to n. So we have n number of distinct objects in front of us. And I'm asking you to find how many ways you can choose say uh, for instance four objects so you may choose one two three four or you may choose two three four five or you may choose one three seven twelve so that way how many different ways we can choose four objects out of these given n number of objects the answer is n choose four Mind it that we are simply choosing the objects here, hence we apply the concept of combination. There is no arrangement involved in this problem because order doesn't matter in a set. So we don't apply permutation, we apply only combinations. Using this logic, we get the following statements. Number of subsets with zero element is n choose zero. We know that n choose zero is one. It has to be one. Because how many different ways you can choose nothing? Only one way, that is, choose nothing. Number of subsets with exactly one element is n choose 1, which we know is n. The number of subsets with exactly two elements is n choose 2. It goes on till the number of subsets with exactly n elements is n choose n. Now we need to add all these terms. Then the total number of subsets is we know that it's mathematically denoted by the notation cardinality of p of a and it is given by n choose 0 plus n choose 1 plus n choose 2 plus it goes on up to n choose n. Now how do we add these terms? If you observe carefully you will recognize these terms because we came across these exact terms in another famous theorem. Pause and think and leave the answer in the comments below. Yes, it is the binomial theorem. Do you see that the coefficients of this binomial expansion are nothing but the terms of our series? So in order to find the sum of the series, we need to get rid of a's and b's which are blocking our way. Since we know that 1 and its powers will disappear in a product, let's put a equals 1 and b equals 1 in this equation. We get 1 plus 1 the whole power n equals n choose 0 plus n choose 1 plus n choose 2 so on up to n choose n. Therefore we get cardinality of p of a equals 2 power n. Hence proved. And here's the bonus proof which I promised you. Consider the given set a with elements 1, 2, 3, 4 so on up to n. Any subset of a can be represented by a sequence of ones and zeros. One means that it belongs to a subset and zero means that it doesn't belong to a subset. I'll explain what it means using the following example. For example, set B which is given by 1, 3 and 6 can be denoted by the sequence 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, so on. It's a sequence consisting of n terms. So how do we interpret this? Let us rewrite the set A with little more detail. In the sense, let me write more elements of it. So I just claim that this set B with the elements 1, 3 and 6 can be denoted by this sequence of 1s and zeros, right? So what is the meaning of it? What is this 1? What does it represent? Now go to this original set A. This number 1, this element 1 is also part of the set B. So we denote it by 1. 
which indicates that this particular element is part of this subset. Now look at the next element 2. It's not part of the subset B, so we use 0. Look at the third element 3. This element is part of the subset B, hence we denote it by 1. Look at this fourth element 4. This element is not part of B, so 0. 5 is not part of B, so 0 again. 6 is part of B, so 1. 7 is not part of B. After 6, all these numbers are not part of set B. Hence, all the terms will be 0 after 6. So similarly, consider this set 1, 4. This can be represented by the sequence 1, 0, 0, 1. Rest all are zeros. Now you got the idea, right? Therefore, the number of subsets of A is equal to the number of possible sequences of 1's and zeros of length n. Okay, we are going to now use uh, block diagram. All these square blocks here denote the terms of the sequence consisting of only 1's and zeros, and the length of the sequence is n. So how many different ways we can fill up this first block? I repeat, the first block represents the first term of the sequence. So how many different options we have for the first term of the sequence? The first term can be either 0 or 1. So two different ways of filling it up. What about the second block? Again, two different ways. What about the third block? Two different ways. What about the fourth block? Two different ways. It goes on up to the last block, which represents the last term of that sequence of length n. Again, two different ways. Now we apply the multiplication principle of counting. So 2 is being multiplied by itself n number of times. The answer is 2 power n. Hence proved. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. We'll be regularly posting high school related and college related math videos. If you're interested in such content, please do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. Thanks for watching.